Hello, hello, hello. Is this level okay? okay. You ready? Yeah. Great. Okay, everybody. So our final talk of the morning is uh, from Luis Ramirez, from CEO of Mavadi. Our title of this talk, as you can see up here, is Accelerating AR's WhatsApp Adoption, which I love, by the way. Hope we can achieve that. And uh, Enabling synthetic, synthetic Reality for Everyone. So under here, it says, AR streaming creates vast new opportunities for immersive content to be consumed more broadly and by more devices than ever before. It gives creators almost unlimited resources. So Mawari's mission is to unlock creative capacity by enabling creators to do what they do best without delivery constraints. So please join me in welcoming Luis Ramirez from CEO of Mawari. Hello, thank you. Uh, I'm Luis Ramirez, founder and CEO of Mawari. We provide a 3D XR streaming solution that has been already deployed over 35 projects across the world in, in, in Germany, in Singapore, in Japan, and soon in, in the US. Before we start, uh, yesterday after hearing uh, Ori's uh, keynote and reflecting about the whole uh, metaverse bus, um, yeah, we had a conversation with uh, John Bussell and we were talking about how long it will, will really take for the metaverse to be part of everyone's uh, daily life. Uh, and it made me realize that uh, people really don't get or don't understand how hard it is really and how complicated it is to build these foundational layers. Uh, or blocks to make this possible. This is all about like the core technology that will power the, the metaverse of the future. And this timeline to get there, some of them, like Ori was saying, okay, 20, 30 or like 10, 15 years, we, we need to make our bets. Is It all depends on solving uh, very specific uh, problems, which I will outline now. Um, it is uh, mainly uh, some tasks that uh, are being tackled, but not at the right speed. One of them is the interoperability between assets, uh, the creation of standards for content delivery, and of course, the, the infrastructure. For example, let's, let's think about this. Like, um, where is the HTML for the metaverse, in which all these uh, Metaverse worlds can talk to each other and you can stream your avatar to, to another metaverse seamlessly and you don't need to have an avatar for, for, for each uh, metaverse, for, for example. Or where is the Akamai of the metaverse that makes the heavy content instantly to all users? Like today, uh, when we go to Netflix or, or any other streaming uh, service, I mean, you just press play and it's immediately available. But when it comes to 3D content, it is not that way. So where is the Akamai of the metaverse? That's another uh, good question to, to reflect. And finally, like where is the MP3 of the metaverse? The, this compression that overcomes both bandwidth and rendering limitations of the client devices, uh, smartphones, smart glasses. And at the same time, it will deliver an, a very immersive and seamless experience. So we have a very long way to, to, to get there. And it's companies like, like us and many people uh, here at AWXR that are really challengers and really trying to, to tackle these uh, difficult problems. So at, at Maguari, our main focus is to solve uh, the problem of content delivery and infrastructure layers shown in this article. But as I mentioned, all these layers are being built today. And if we don't have these layers built, uh, then there, there's no this, uh, ne neither dystopia nor utopia that everybody's talking about that we will live in the metaverse. Without these foundational layers, nothing's going, ha going to happen. So I'm, so I'm going to present a little bit about uh, our vision and how we see uh, our contribution to solve these problems. So first of all, today in 2021, the internet uh, has 4.6 billion users and it transfers 3.3 uh, gigabytes of data uh, per year. That's a, that's a lot of data. And this is just only for 2D and uh, images, uh, videos, etc., etc. So if we talk about 3D, just think about it. I mean, it's probably an exponential amount of data that is uh, it's even in the petabytes, not uh, uh, and, and so on. So, so for this future, for the AR cloud in 2030 to, 
to become true, we need immediate access to this content, just like we, today we click into Netflix and, and press play. So for this, uh, let me just talk a little bit uh, about the infrastructure part and the content delivery and, and, the, and the problem that we see. Uh, let me tell you about the elephant in the room. Uh, today's technology is not compatible with interactive 3D content uh, at scale with the delivery. Um, this is because of the current uh, rendering pipelines and, and the, uh, as you know, right now we download, then render the application and then you have the experience, but it needs to be immediate and on demand. So there are two big, big bottlenecks uh, on this, uh, the, the size of the content and even if we have 5G, I mean, the, the speeds will get faster, the bandwidth will get faster, but the content will also get, get faster. And the second one is that uh, we're also trying to feed a lot of uh, processing and content into very small devices. So, of course, the, the level of quality that we can get with a render or the, something that we see in a Pixar movie is, is not today and probably in the future it's going to be very hard to, to render that quality on the smartphones or on the smart glasses. And moreover, uh, here in Mawari we've been working uh, already about three years with, with 5G. When you start adding 5G into the mix to these devices, they uh, get really, really, really hot and the battery just drains up like almost instantly. So you can enjoy an experience of one minute and that's of course never going to, to scale. So for this reason, uh, we built a, a, a platform that renders the content in, in the cloud and stream it to the mobile AR devices, enabling these rich interactive experiences. And we have packaged this into a, a platform in which we configure the full uh, infrastructure part because that's another problem that we've noticed. Uh, we, we started building just an, an SDK, but there are very few people that has the actual uh, time to, and, and dedication to actually do the custom uh, infrastructure plus the, the co all custom right now in, the, uh, in, in XR. So we're trying to make this easy for, for developers so they can just concentrate on, on building content and, and then just ready to deploy. So in a nutshell how it works, uh, our philosophy is we are a platform agnostic solution. So the creators don't really need to modify the, the current production pipeline. So they can use the, the current uh, 3D tools to, to create their assets and implement in, in Unity or Unreal Engine. All they have to do is connect with our platform. We provide a, a client and a server-side SDK that, that will allow to, to, to stream their, their content. Um, and why, what's good about of our solution compared to other solutions? Um, the only thing that I can say is that we have a patent pending 3D streaming codec that requires 60 times less power to display a high quality content in, in mobile devices. What does this mean? That we can uh, fit a, a GPU and an RTX 380 into a small uh, smartphone and you will be able to get uh, ray tracing and all the bells and whistles that only with a powerful gaming PCs you, you can get. And the second one is that uh, compared to uncompressed volumetric video, we reduce the bandwidth uh, up to 100 times. Uh, so that will allow um, to, for more devices to consume immersive content uh, and obviously um, and accelerate this uh, adoption of, uh, of the AR cloud. So next I, I will show a couple uh, use cases and examples of what we've been doing in, in Japan and in, in, in Germany. And it, they, they, they have some music, so I will just speak over it and we'll explain a little bit of the, the details. So please enjoy. So this, uh, this project was uh, with the objective of the interoperability across uh, telcos. So we collaborated with KDDI and Deutsche Telekom. And the point was to deploy a visual positioning system and, and cloud streaming seamlessly across the two countries with the same application and uh, personalized content. So, so here you can see, okay, so they, they are locating with... Uh, 
Okay, she's explaining about Shibuya in Tokyo, and she's a metahuman, and now she's explaining in German. So our application was able to, depending on the location and and the language, to actually swap the characters and in real time uh, explain. I let her explain. She's also a metahuman, by the way. Using the Mobilage X Edge cloud platform to provide unified access to KDDI's and Deutsche Telekom's 5G Edge Mech resources, Starfi and Mawari were able to easily deploy their services and run them with optimal latency and bandwidth to create an outstanding user experience. Okay, I think I'm sending the, out, the audio now to, to the HDMI. No? Gotcha. Okay. So let's go back to the real world outside in the streets, thanks to Starfy's visual positioning system. All working in perfect synchrony and speed, thanks to Mac and 5G. Let's dive into the advantages of edge computing with an A-B comparison. The digital human on the left is rendered by a smartphone and the one on the right is rendered by a Mac server. The difference in quality is evident. The Mac server digital human comprises hyper-detailed face animations, high quality textures and high polygon count, ultra realistic hair and clothing simulations, complicated lighting scenarios with dynamic materials and reflections. This can't be accomplished with a smartphone GPU today. In addition, to render the digital human on the left, more than one gigabyte of data needs to be downloaded, forcing users to wait and providing a bad user experience. In contrast, the one on the right can be streamed instantaneously we will continue to work with interested operators and developers to build a global platform to make access to mech infrastructure as easy as possible. We okay, so a whole new this, this project, the main point was to actually, we, we're releasing with KDDI an open API in which uh, developers will be able to download uh, the right packages to, especially just right now for uh, in the Tokyo area, in which they can get the maps from, from Starfy and do the visual localization and place the, the, the content in the, in the real world, and then stream metahumans or any other um, assets, um, high quality assets in, into the application itself. Uh, what I can tell you about the, the, the metahumans, okay, so th these are actually straight off from the metahuman editor. Uh, they have, um, uh, we collaborated with Quantum Capture to do the real-time AI uh, motion, uh, uh, lip sync and, and all the facial morphs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this uh, metahuman is about 1 million polygons and it has over 408k textures. So as you can imagine, it cannot be rendered on, on, on a smartphone. On top of that, it's connected in real time to text-to-speech service. So she's actually speaking through, through Google TT, TTS. And it's uh, fully programmatic, so you can uh, just in a couple minutes change the text and your application will be, will be able to be streamed and, and explain uh, about the text that, that you write. The, the other highlight is that in, in this uh, project we challenged to actually get uh, up to three different virtual machines streamed into the same application, having the digital human explaining about the uh, AR advertisement that comes from, 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 from the billboard. So yes, uh, you can visit KDDI website and look just KDDI Open API. It will open very soon, and you will be able to to, to get uh, the basic uh, package to, to roll out. Unfortunately, uh, right now it's only working in Tokyo, but we're working with other operators so that uh, you can actually test it in here in the U.S. or if you're in another country uh, as well. I will explain the, the next project. Uh, this is uh, at a shopping mall in, in Ginza. This is a smartphone. Uh, what happened? This is a smartphone application. Uh, basically, uh, we collaborated with an artist called uh, Kohei Nawa. He's, uh, he's the next uh, Murakami of Japan, for, the, for those that uh, you don't know. Um, he's a sculpture and also does some visuals. And we collaborated and created uh, this uh, point cloud. It's a three-minute performance of uh, 200K uh, points. 
and uh, and the total size actually of the file was about uh, 40 gigabytes and we reduced it to 400 megabytes just to be actually be able to be streamed in real time through, through 5g and users just by uh, localizing like doing the recognition of the statue we would uh, very accurately place the, the point cloud and they would enjoy the, the, the three minute performance. So you, you can watch a little bit of, uh, of this. And on top of that, the, these uh, points actually have uh, real time reflections. It was a very tough project because as you can imagine, an, an artist like Kohei Nawa doesn't settle for, for less than uh, high quality. So it, it was very challenging and the only way to, to overcome this was through, through the cloud. Okay, so let's move to, to the next one. This is also a digital assistant, a, a MetaHuman. This, is, this application is for uh, Unreal Smart Glasses. The full use case is uh, you go to the art gallery, get the, the glasses on, and then the application know exactly where you are, and then she will appear and start explaining about the, the paintings that, that you're observing. Also, we did a uh, full 3D photogrammetry of um, Emile Gallet uh, art, and you can see it in uh, 16K textures, uh, also streamed from the cloud, so you'll see. So this is the MetaHuman from, from KDDI. She welcomes you. This is all recorded from the viewport of the Unreal Glasses, so she's guiding you. Okay, let's go to the first uh, painting. Once you are there, it will recognize, okay, you are at this painting, she will appear, and then she will start uh, explaining what, what's the, what are the highlights of uh, this painting. Again, since it's uh, fully programmatic from the cloud, she could be uh, explaining in Japanese or in English. It's, it's, not, it's indifferent. Shortly after this, we will see the, the other experience with uh, Emile Gallet, which is a hybrid of, uh, I would call it AR and VR because we augment this uh, base and you can uh, get inside it. And as you can see, the, all the lighting and the 16K textures are uh, being uh, cloud streamed. There you go. It's, uh, I mean, you need to get the glasses and, and, and see how, how it feels, but it really transforms you into a, into a different world. Then the next project, this is at the Museum of uh, Innovation in, uh, in, in Tokyo. We collaborated with uh, the creator tool uh, Styli. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. Uh, so we integrated uh, our streaming technology, and this is a uh, one of the core examples of our technology that uh, our philosophy is split rendering. So what you will see here in the, in the viewport of the Unreal Glasses is some content that is being rendered locally on the device and some content that is going to be rendered uh, on the cloud to provide the right quality. So this is the digital human, and as you see, it's, it's different, uh, a, a different uh, outfit that fits the uniform of the, the museum. All the floor uh, and all the mapping is rendered locally, and then the digital human is, is uh, rendered from, from the cloud. And it's a similar use case. The user interface is just walking. Uh, we also realized that um, for, for users to really get into AR, you just really need to Oh, sorry again. Uh, m make it as easy as possible for, for them to, to use the content. So when we have a user interfaces like the uh, controllers and all that, uh, the general consumers, it's very hard for them to, to actually understand how to operate the AR application. So in the end, just by walking, it's like, look here, go there, then and then can trigger the experiences and it, it gave really, really, really good results. Sorry, let me try to fix this to show the last video. It's 
it working now? OK, there you go. Cool. OK, so this one is also, we, we worked with uh, Netflix and uh, Ghost in the Shell, the anime. Unfortunately, due to copyright purposes, we cannot use uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell characters. But the point, this was a location-based uh, uh, experience in which you could, again, split rendering, the, the grid on the floor is rendered lo uh, locally, in which you could walk to these uh, steps and then uh, in the end, uh, the character, like it, in the case it was Tachikoma, would appear and then you could actually have a bi-directional communication with, with this character. Uh, we, our uh, streaming platform uh, supports also voice communication, so you can send voice commands to, to the server, and then the, if you program the, the logic in the application, of course, uh, we can work it out. Uh, the last thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, to provide this level of, of quality, we are using an Unreal Engine on the server side. And actually, since Unreal and most of the AR applications are uh, Unity-based, actually, we stream cross-platform. So we also our philosophy is really towards the interoperability. We also can stream to, to, to WebGL applications. Uh, that one is still in prototype stage, but uh, yeah, we, we've managed also to, to stream content directly from Unreal Engine in 3D to, to, to WebGL. So that's it about malware in a nutshell. Uh, you can visit us at uh, 606 and you can uh, watch the demo. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Quite, quite impressive and uh, quite, quite interesting. Thank you very much. So at this time, we'll take some questions from the audience for Luis. Everyone else is dumbfounded by how good this is. <laughs> it's, it's quite impressive. Seriously, it's quite, uh, you know, it's, it's quite an achievement to get that kind of compression and to get the kind of you know, re-rendering, actually. Okay, anybody at all? Great. Well, again, thank you so much again, Luis. It's really impressive. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, you know, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody.